right? By a trial, by the court, not by the executive, by the uh, law enforcement. For instance, the Concord company that was brought up. It's been accused. It's been accused of interference. But this company does not constitute the Russian state. It does not represent the Russian state. And I brought several examples before. Well, you have a lot of individuals in the United States, take George Soros, for instance, with multi-billion capitals. But it, does it make him his position, his posture, the posture of the United States? No, it does not. But it's the same case. There is the issue of trying a case in the court. And the final, uh, the, the final say is for the court to deliver. We are now talking about the private, in, the, the, the individuals, and not about particular states. And as far as the most recent allegation is concerned about the Russian intelligence officers, we do have an intergovernmental treaty. Please do send us the request. We will analyze it properly and will send a formal response. And as I said, we can extend this cooperation, but we should do it on a reciprocal basis, because we would await our Russian counterparts to provide us access to the persons of interest for us, who, who we believe can have something to do with the intelligence service. Well, let's discuss the specific issues and not use the Russia and the US relationship as a loose change, the loose change for this internal political struggle. A question for President for President Putin, thank you. Uh, two questions for you, sir. Can you tell me what President Trump may have indicated to you about officially recognizing Crimea as part of Russia? And then secondly, sir, do you, does the Russian government have any compromising material on President Trump or his family? <laughs> President Trump and, uh, well, posture of President Trump on Crimea is well known and he stands firmly by it. He continue to man maintain that uh, it was illegal to annex it. We, our viewpoint is different. We held a referendum in strict compliance with the UN Charter and the international legislation. For us, this issue, we put paid to this issue. And now to the compromising material. Yeah, I did hear these rumors that we allegedly collected compromising material on Mr. Trump when he was visiting Moscow. Our oh, distinguished colleague, let me tell you this. When President Trump visited Moscow back then, I didn't even know that he was in Moscow. I treat President Trump with utmost respect. But back then, when he was a private individual, a businessman, nobody informed me that he was in Moscow. Well, let's take St. Petersburg Economic Forum, for instance. There were over 500 American businessmen, the high-ranking, the high-level ones. I don't even remember the last names of each and every one of them. Well, do you remember, do you think that we try to collect compromising material on each and every single one of them? Well, it's difficult to imagine uh, another nonsense of a bigger scale than this. Well, please, just disregard these issues and don't think about this anymore again. And I have to say, if they yeah. had it, it would have been out long ago. And if anybody watched Peter Strzok testify over the last couple of days, and I was in Brussels watching it, it was a disgrace to the FBI. It was a disgrace.